it's that time again. It's time for Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal, and my name is Deborah, and I live here on my family farm in the foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks, where the sun just came up for a whole 20 seconds, and then it went back behind the cloud. Um, I live here on my family farm, and I like to do all the crafts. I knit, I crochet, I sew, I quilt, I make baskets, I make jewelry, I do needlework of various types. Uh, I'll try any craft once and twice if I like it. I am also a professor of physics and astronomy at a local university where I teach classes to physics majors, to general education majors, and everything in between. I am a docent at our planetarium where I do shows for school groups and community groups. And I am also a strong advocate for diversity and inclusion in STEM. Um, and last but not least, I am a third generation family farmer. I live here on 170 acres in the uh, foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks where I raise grass-fed beef cattle, I raise horses, I raise heritage poultry and show quality rabbits. And I have a retirement herd of miniature horses, miniature donkeys, donkeys, a miniature mule named Pumpkin who thinks she rules a roost, and Princess Penny, the potbelly pig, protector of the poultry, except when she goes on excursions around the yard, <laughs> which we'll talk about that in farm life. And as you can tell from my sweet little co-host Willie here, I am fur kid mom to 13 dogs, 8 indoor cats, and an undetermined number of outside barn cats. So, yes. So if any or of all of that sounds interesting to you, come on along on episode number 56. Wow, I know. It's very exciting. 56 of Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. What'd you say? Okay, I rearranged a little bit because the light's being really weird because this, it's partly cloudy today, so the sun is going in and out behind clouds and the light keeps changing and since I don't have a fancy podcasting setup I have to go with whatever natural light I have uh, and it's constantly changing so I tried putting a lamp on we'll see if that helps um, so on social media you can find my farm Facebook page is the same as my YouTube channel name it is Buckthorn Farms and I post things about farming and farm related links and occasionally I write pieces and I post pictures of the animals and what's going on on the farm yes uh, you can also find me on Instagram and on Ravelry as Doc Firewoman and there is a Ravelry group for the podcast where you can find out about giveaways and make alongs and things of that nature uh, and last but not least I am on Twitter but I am a pretty socially liberal Democrat so if that sort of thing gives you heartburn probably best not to follow me on Twitter because that's where I kind of cut loose although I will warn you I'm probably gonna get a little bit more mouthy everywhere as we approach the, uh, prim we're in primary season right now, but when we get closer to the general election, I'm probably going to get a lot more mouthy. Um, and when I post something, just so you know, I always verify my sources. <laughs> so um, I always try to make sure I post things that are vetted and not fake news. So don't at me just because you don't like what it says. <laughs> anyway, uh, that being said, um, yeah, so... Uh, Let's talk about, um, actually what I want to do, and I normally do this sort of thing at the end of the podcast, but for some reason I'm compelled to talk about mental health just briefly uh, this morning, and maybe it's because I'm feeling a certain kind of way myself lately, or because I know there are other people who are struggling, and I wanted to um, read this piece it's very short, but I wanted to read it just so that if anybody needs to hear it, um, they can. And it's called Resilience by Alex L. Or L-E-L-E-L, -E -L -E -L, probably I think it's E-L-L-E. -L -E. It says, look at you still standing after being knocked down and thrown out. Look at you still growing after being picked and plucked and prodded out of your home. Look at you still dancing and singing and being defeated and after being defeated and disassembled. Look at you, love, still here and hopeful after it all. I needed to hear that today and I hope that some of y'all did too. So, um, yes. So let's talk about make-alongs. <laughs> that little segue there. Um, so first of all, there is a giveaway that's going on to be eligible to enter the giveaway, you have to watch the previous episode and follow the prompt on it 
to be eligible for my giveaway, but uh, hopefully you can go. I talk about it early on if you don't want to hear about all the science and the farm. It's in the first part, so you can go there. I will be drawing for that probably uh, the next time I podcast, which will be in approximately two weeks. And uh, it is for my two-year anniversary, which is coming up on February the 28th. Um, okay, so what kind of make-alongs do we have going on? Right now, we have several. Uh, we have, first up, I'm just reading them in the order that they're up here on my Ravelry group. We have the string-along. String-along is where we're using thread to make things such as doilies or ornaments or embroidery on things or anything where we use the thread to crochet knit or whatever on something. Um, there's a lot of people doing doilies. I'm working on a new one. I have one to show you that I have finished. Yay! Uh, there, we're going to be having that blizzard along in July that we'll be using string. So if you want to try out making some snowflakes, those are a fairly low intensity activity because they don't have that many rounds on them. Um, bust move stash down. That goes with along and hand in hand with some other stash downs that are going on including Kirsty Grenade Creations has a stash down. Uh, with mine, if you're using pattern and yarn you own before January 1st of this year, you can get a double entry in the thread, and I will be drawing uh, probably at the end of this month for a random prize, so make sure you get in there and get to chattering away on that thread. Uh, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Uh, that is where we are working daily as best as we can. I mean, we don't probably, most of us have missed a day here and there, but we are committing to a large project that we are trying to get done, or maybe just a project that's been languishing for a long time and we're finding it hard to work on it. Um, work on it a little bit every day, even if it's just for five minutes. And normally what I find if I get my stuff out and I get ready to work on it, I'll usually work on it for much more than five minutes, maybe 30 minutes or so. There have been nights when all I have done is put a row on my project and that was enough. It just depends on what's going on. But um, we are ending this first two months of our elephants and we're going to be post, please post your progress by the end of the month so I can draw a prize. Uh, you don't have to be done. You just have to have made some progress. Um, and then if you want to continue to work on that same elephant, we declare our next two months of elephant uh, on March 1st. So it can be the same stuff, or you can add something new if you're getting close to finishing up. I'm getting close to being done with mine, so I'm probably going to add another one. Uh, then we have Kitter Getter Done. Kitter Getter Done, because I have issues with buying kits. I'm looking at a couple right there. Uh, it helps you get work through your kits that you have purchased so you can buy more, right? <laughs> Uh, how, uh, let's see then, Practical Magic. Practical Magic is where we are making non-apparel things. So, um, blankets or dishcloths or tea cozies or table coverings or uh, Carrie Ann made a clock face. <laughs> she knitted a clock face. Um, so, there are different ways you can come at that, but it's just non-apparel things. So things for the home or things that have a use other than being worn. And then we have Creature Feature. Creature Feature is Amigurumis. Our theme until the end of March is Up, Up, and Away. And I have made a little bit of progress on my Up, Up, and Away, my dragon. So uh, we will be switching to what's bugging you in the next um, the next wave. So that can be butterflies or it can be... I mean, I'm not going to be strict about my definition of insects. So um, anything that, that is insect-like, I will take. Caterpillars, um, crustaceans, um, anything like that. I'm pretty flexible. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have the science sprinkle. Science sprinkle is each month I am posting a thread with lots of science information, uh, uh, highlighting a female scientist, and then also um, a tried at home thing. This month we're doing a scale model of the solar system. So those go up on the 15th of the month. I need to draw for um, the January, from January 15th to February 15th. That's probably a political poll calling me because the, the primary is coming up, and I'm just going to let it ring. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, you can go on there and read and learn some stuff about science. And I just give you a little taste of what has happened in that month uh, for science. But uh, there's so much that I could write about. But I try to get a broad spectrum of accomplishments and activities for you to look at and then highlight a woman scientist and then always will have a try-it-at-home thing. Uh, so those are our... Um, 
or giveaways or make along news. Uh, I know that there are a couple others that I will uh, speak to. Uh, Vanessa is doing a self striping or a stripe along. It doesn't have to be self striping. It just has to be striped. You can stripe it by your, you know, your own self. Uh, and then I know that um, there is the Scrappy Along and the Socket Timmy Cow going on in the Knick Knack Knits podcast with Heather and Nikki. And there's lots of other ones going on. So just go and check out uh, your podcast. I encourage double and triple dipping whenever possible because, you know, work those, work those make-alongs. <laughs> anyway, so that is all for social media. So now we're going to move on and talk about some finished objects that I have some to share with you today. Yay, I finished some stuff. I don't have the heart to make Willie get down just yet, so I'll show you what I have here, and then I'll uh, make him briefly move so I can reach what's over there. Okay, so the first thing that I have finished is I have completed two more blocks on my elephant. Oh, I knocked the end off my sewing machine. My elephant is my marine life blanket. I have shown you the blocks over time as I have been working on it. I started it about a year and a half ago now, and I put it up for a period of time. Uh, but I am going strong. I am on the. I'm working on the last block. Yay! So uh, last time I podcasted, I showed you this block in progress. This is the oyster with the pearl, and now it is complete. So got that done. And then uh, I started and completed in the last uh, couple of weeks my mermaid block. So yay! Got her done. Uh, that one I was. I was kind of worried about doing this one because I thought it would be very complicated, but it really wasn't that bad. It went, it went quite quickly, uh, surprisingly enough. So, um, yeah, so my mermaid is done. All right. So that's blocks 18 and 19. Yay. We're getting so close. Uh, anyway. All right. So, uh, I also finished, um, my Swiffer cover. I was talking about this last time this here it is modeling on my Swiffer sweeper. Uh, this is the uh, Biffer crochet, crochet Biffer Shrug pattern. Mine looks a little different than hers does because my Swiffer was a different width. So I actually had to make the pattern a little bit longer. So I'm I have staggered my front and back post double crochets, but I like that texture. Uh, you can see it has the little pockets on the back to put it over the top of your Swiffer. So I just measured mine and made this. I haven't tried it out yet, but I probably should. <laughs> I need to clean house, so I probably need to put that into practice here before too much longer. So when I finished that, I had made the washcloth that I showed last time, and I had made that. I had just a little bit of that yarn left, and I thought, I'm going to use this up. I'm going to sit down tonight and use up the last of this yarn. So what I did was I made finished it up by making scrubbies. So uh, these are the Sakura Face Scrubby. I made some of those once before that I showed on here, so I got three of those, and then this is... A variation on the simple scrubby because one of them I didn't have enough yarn to make the full size so I used up all of that yarn there was just like a maybe a little maybe six inch piece left by the time I got done with these so uh, that is one skein of yarn completely gone <laughs> out of my stash and a lot of practical good stuff out of it okay um, Another thing that I got finished this uh, go-round is in my Molly Klein's Design Narwhals bag here. Um, you may have remembered I was working on... Oh, I don't know if I showed these. I'll get those through in a minute. Uh, I was working on my Shave Em to Save Em project with the yarn from the Rosefield Farm. So I have completed my Wadsworth cowl. This is the Wadsworth cowl by Kyle William. Uh, the last time I showed it, I was down there by the horseshoe, and so I have finished it. So this is a simple uh, slip stitch texture cowl that will be really good to wear under a jacket or a coat. I have not washed it or blocked it yet, so I suspect it may grow just a little bit. Uh, this is uh, Lester Longwool yarn from the Shave and the Save em, uh, category. And it is by the Rosefield Farm. And Shirley Knits picked this up for me in, um, at Maryland Sheep and Wool. Now, I could have made this longer. I was concerned I would not have enough because this yarn was not exactly the same weight as what the pattern called for. And uh, as you can see, I have plenty left. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do um, is I found a real... Someone that I know on Instagram is making a... 
a blanket that was a crocheted round blanket and I thought, ooh, I could take this and then I have some gray that I could hold double and um, make a table, like a table mat out of this. Um, so I think that that's what I'm going to do in, in the interest of getting this completely finished up yarn wise. I'm really on this kick of I want to use up all the bits and pieces that I have when I'm working on a project. So I think what I'm going to do, and I should be talking about this in future crafting, I guess, but um, I'm going to use that up in a like a wool table mat or something or some table decoration or whatever. Okay. Now, Willie, honey, you're going to have to get down just a brief minute. Honey, i got to reach over here and get these. I have a couple other finished objects to show you that are still on the blocking mats. Okay, hang on, buddy. All right. So, um, one of these I sort of finished, but I didn't quite finish it completely a long time ago. And then I finally finished it, wove in all the ends, and blocked it. Uh, this is the Pretty Kitty Doily. Um, I need to find the pattern. It was a, I started this a really long time ago, and I just had the pattern on my phone. So I need to find the actual pattern, but you can see the kitty cats in here. Uh, and then I blocked it. This is some blue cotton thread that my friend Dana's mother gave me. So I finally got that. It's kind of modified from the actual pattern because I made a mistake, and I just decided to finish it in this way so that's one and that is a long overdue to finish whip that I started I, I can't remember if I started in 2015 or 2017 and then I finished my swirl doily my swirl doily from the circular round doilies now I didn't do a great job about pinning it out straight because I just wet blocked this I didn't starch it yet so I'm going to take it to the ironing board and put some spray starch on it. But I finished the Swirl Doily. Uh, from the, it's by Margaret Rost. And it's in the uh, Leisure Art Circular Round Doilies. So I got that finished also. Pretty proud of that. Not nearly as big as that major centerpiece that Nancy is making. But still, those, lo those last rows get pretty far around when you're trying to go all the way around on those those rows so that is all of my finished objects as i look around here and i will move on and we'll talk about works in progress okay willie wanted back up here all right so my next uh, few things that i'll show you share with you are my works in progress for this time i am on my last block woo, my last block for my marine life blanket and it is the probably one of the simplest ones it is a piece of seaweed and it is just two colors all right so i started it last night and i'm already on row 16 uh so i am this far on it okay this is some of that purple sparkly yarn i've used that on several different uh blocks and i'm trying to use up scraps i'm trying not to buy any yarn now i am going to have to buy some to do the lattice and honestly, I don't know if I'm going to do the lattice as it calls, because it calls for these pretty wide ripple stitch panels in between everything. I think that's going to make it so huge that I won't use it. So what I need to do is once I get this block done, um, I mean, even before I lay, when I do the, um, I have to do some border work around these things. Even before I do that, um, I'm going to lay them out and get a sense of how big this thing is going to be and decide what I want to do about the ripple stitch panels, because I have a feeling that they're going to make it so huge that I'm not going to want to do them. But uh, because the original blanket only had 12 blocks and I opted to do some of the bonus blocks. So I have 20 blocks. I have my blanket instead of being three by four is going to be four by five. So it's going to be quite a bit bigger than uh, the original pattern. But anyway, so there is my seaweed. And I was talking with um, Shirley and she was talking about corner to corner. She said, I don't know if I can do that. And I'm like, if you can crochet, you can do corner to corner. <laughs> it's just double crochets and chains is all it is. Uh, yarn management is an issue. I know that Penny is making a corner to corner blanket where she's weaving in all the ends as she goes. I probably should have done that because there is no amount of money in the world that will make me go back and weave in all those ends on that thing. So I'm going to put a back on mine. I'm going to tie my yarns and put a back on mine is how I'm going to manage my ends. Uh, but anyway, so there is the last block for the Marine Life blanket. Um, okay, so the next thing that I will show here, I'm going to try to do uh, 
knitting and crocheting first and then stitching. I put a little bit of effort into my Calavera shawl. So this is in my Home Row Fiber Co. Uh, bag. And I am working on the Calavera shawl. Uh, it was by, I believe, Lori Law. It was part of the Celtic Year Club. Um, and it came out, I got the pattern in 2018. So you can kind of tell a little bit about it there. It has a beaded spine. And then the, um, I, call, I said it was the Beltane shawl. It was the Samhain shawl from tw uh, 2018. Uh, the little, the lace work is supposed to look like the little Day of the Dead skulls. Um, and I, so I am up to the point where I'm going to start putting in the skull lace. So the last time I showed it, it was down here. I just worked on it one evening and got it up to the point where I'm ready to start doing alternating the skull lace with the garter stitch sections. Um, so yeah, one thing that I've noticed though, and I know a lot of people make these stitch markers that they're just the beads with the jump rings. I don't know if I'm rough on these things or what, but I always get them opening up, opening up and then they get stuck on my yarn and that really bugs me. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, got some beautiful beads going up that central spine there. So I put a little bit of time on this. Uh, I would probably going to work on it a little bit um, tonight. I have not got back to my changes shawl, which is why I want to get this out of the way because this is a one skein shawl. Should take less time, right? Should, should take less time. Okay, um, my next stitching progress is a sad tale of woe <laughs> in my kitty cat moods bag. The Bridget hat. I frogged it. And I will tell you why after I pick my needles up because I dropped them. Oh, hang on, Willie. Woof. Um, as y'all know, as I've talked about before, I'm a left-handed knitter. And I thought that I had switched the pattern up, but the problem was is the ribbing was not symmetric. It was two, three, three, two, three, three, two, three, three. So it was two, knit two, purl three, per knit three, purl three, knit two. And because I knitted that in the order prescribed in the pattern, when I started knitting the ribbing, my stuff wasn't lining up because it was supposed to line up with that uh, ribbing. So I frogged it and I figured out what I can do to make it work. But right now, I'm not sure I want to knit that hat anymore. Um, so I'm going to look and see what else is out there. In turn, I want a cabled hat out of this green blacker swan yarn because I think it will show off the cabling really well. But right now I'm mad at that hat and I don't want to make it. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, there's something really freeing about deciding it's okay to let a project go, isn't there? All right, my next um, stitch or knitting and crocheting work in progress is in my alpaca bag from April 9 Designs. This is one of her two at a time sock sacks. Oh my gosh, did she start a pair of socks? Yes, yes, I did. I am knitting the Vagary socks by the Knitting Expat. This is her uh, one of her, from one of her Wanderlust Sock Club collections from 2018. The Vagary socks. Uh, I am knitting these out of String Theory Colorworks self striping yarn in the colorway WB40, which is named after a supernova remnant. It was a sock set that had a matching mini for uh, your heels, toes, and cuffs. And I am just getting started good on these. I've done one repeat of the pattern. So there's it's a 12 row. 12 row pattern I've, I've, I've gotten through one repeat so I am that far and you can see no they're not going to match but you know what if you get into a position where you can see that my socks don't match we're probably close enough that you're not going to be upset about that <laughs> so you know um, most people will never see this part of my socks <laughs> so anyway so this is a, a supernova remnant that's black has a white fleck in it to look like galaxies which, I mean, of course, I immediately fell in love with, with the, the yarn. So, anyway, so I am through one repeat on those, and that is going well. That is my new take it to work and knit on it before class uh, project. Now that I'm done with my Wadsworth cowl. Oh, I need to put my pattern back in there so I don't lose it. Because, you know, you got to try to keep everything together. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, okay. Put that there. All right, the next one that I have is I have started a new doily. Um, it is in my Curvy Witches bag by Tesla Knits. And I showed this, I believe, last time on Future Crafting. I have just gotten started on it. 
It is the um, Valentine Heart Doily by Anne Marie Wilkerson. So you make the hearts, the red hearts, all first, and then you crochet borders around them. So I have only made one, but I did get started. I started on this like at 11 o'clock one night, which I shouldn't have because then I ended up sitting up too late. But I've got one heart done. Um, I'm using the same colors I used in those little heart earrings. So like this burgundy, a variegated pink. It's kind of hard to tell a lot about that because of the light. There you go. And then a fuchsia. And then, of course, the white. So I had these already all out, and I was sitting there looking at that pattern, and I thought, well, why don't I just go ahead and start making that? So I've just barely gotten started on it, but I have gotten started on it. Um, so yay me. And I am enjoying very much working with thread. I know thread can be a little intimidating to people, but here's the deal. There's no rules about you have to use the teensy thread and the teensy hooks. You use the less teensy thread, like a 10, and use a nice size hook, and then it's your thing anyway, so who cares? Make it make it the way you like it, right? There's no prescription. There's no, as much as people like to think that they're the knitting and crocheting authority, what are they going to do? Come to your house and take it away from you? Yeah. Do what you like. Okay, um, my next project is in my Countess Ablaze uh, tote, and it is my dragon. I am making the Water Dragon by, um, oh, forget her name. Hang on just a second. Crafty Intentions, or not Crafty Intentions. Yeah, Crafty Intentions, who I believe is Megan Lapp. I am making the Water Dragon. Now, this pattern is huge because she does a really, really good job of documenting with photographs what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, so, to give you an idea of how much documentation there is, I am, let's see, I am done putting the back legs on, so I am up to step number 58, so I have completed this many pages of that pattern, so I'm about halfway through, or not quite halfway through, maybe a third of the way through. Um, the way that you do this is the legs are crocheted in as you go, they are not sewn on at the end. So, um, I showed last time with his little sun catcher craft eyes. So, I have done the tail, and now I'm, I have put the back legs on. And I started working on the body. And I'm getting close to the point where I'm going to put the front legs on. So, he's going to eventually end up sitting up, I think. Had it figured out. I think something like, oops. Had it, I think something like this. And then there's going to be a piece of wire that goes in this tail. Um, I've got the arms there. I think I showed the head last time with the sun catcher craft eyes, but I'll go ahead and show that again just for funsies because I think these eyes are so beautiful. So there's his little eye. That's one of the mermaid eye set. The purple, purple and silver and everything in it. So um, yeah, so I got all that uh, done and it's Dragon Thursday, so <laughs> Nancy and I will probably be working on our dragons. I know she's working on toothless, although hers is black yarn, and uh, that is really hard to see <laughs> at night. Okay, so that is all of my yarny works in progress. Now let's talk some stitching works in progress. And Willie, I'm going to have to make you get down for just a couple minutes, okay? Can you do that for me? He's not thinking he wants to do that, but we're going to have to do that just a minute. There you go, bro. Okay, uh, the first thing that I will show is my work on Rennie the Fox for the Pro Frosted Pumpkin Stitcheries uh, Stitch Animal Almanac Stitch Along. Um, this is what he looks like. He's a little fox in a bathtub with a bathing cap on. And I am that far on him. Okay, so I've got about, I'm probably, I would say a little more than halfway done. So, um, yeah, so it's a very doable pattern, but I've got the bubbles. I still have to do his bathing cap and the other little cabinet and then the stuff down at the bottom. Um, so I'm, I'm making progress. I'm, I'm no more than I've worked on it the last couple of weeks. I'm pretty pleased with how far I've come. So I will give that some love and attention probably later tonight as well. Uh, get that out of the way. So that is the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery's Animal Almanac. You can still purchase the pattern, but they are out of the kits. 
uh, if you wanted to purchase a kit, unfortunately they are sold out. I know there's quite a few people doing this, so it's been fun to watch other people's progress uh, on Instagram, and I've made some new friends that way. So it's always fun to make a new friend or two. Oh, and that is in my April 9 Designs uh, cross-stitching bag. It's got little wintertime animals on it. You can't see it right now, but um, she also, Charlotte also makes these really beautiful cross-stitching bags, so um yeah alrighty. the next thing that i will show is in um my arkansas yarn crawl tote bag um this is see i put it in a nicer bag <laughs> these are the uh, pillowcases these are the bacilla magnolia blossom pillowcases that i'm making for miss betsy for christmas i put a little bit of time in on these i think i worked on them one or two nights i haven't given them as much attention as i have other projects but um yeah so i have started on the magnolias now so last time i showed it i had not put any of that white on just got a little bit of i think i worked on it one evening and put all that cream in so i need to give those some attention so i need to start a stitching day i guess where that's all i do is work on stitching except for my elephant project so um yeah so got that much done and then i get to do it all again on the other pillowcase and then decide how I want to finish them. Okay, uh, and then last but not least, in my stitching works in progress, is my Let's Gallop horse. So this is Let's Gallop by Ursula Michael. It is a um, pattern by, let's see, Imaginating. Imaginating, I picked this up at my local stitching shop, um, the um, Stitcher's Garden, which I posted the video from. I hope you had a chance to watch that. And I am doing this in a rainbow gradient to honor the Rainbow Rider kids and their horses. Um, so I am through the gold. So I've got one, two, three, four, five colors out of 14 done. Okay, so I am through the gold section and getting ready to start yellow. And I was a little concerned that the yellow and the gold would not show up very well, but I think the choice that I made to use a double thickness for the back stitching has made a difference and how it looks and luckily the parts that have the lighter colors actually have a little bit of actual cross stitch in them and not just back stitching so i'm hoping that that will make them show up better so that is going fairly quickly that's this last section took a little bit longer simply because there is more solid cross stitching in it and that took me just a little bit more time but overall i'm very pleased with how it's looking so i'm moving on to yellow for my next color Okay, so that is all of the works in progress I'm going to share with you this week. So let's move on and talk just a little bit about future crafting. Well, I realized I forgot to show you one of my works in progress. So let me show this real quick before we move on to future crafting. But I'm going to stick it in the future crafting segment. I've got all the pieces done for my pumpkin sign. I sat down with my plastic canvas the other day and finished all the stitching. So now all I need to do is put a backing on these so that I can put them together. So this is what it will ultimately look like, but I'll try to hold it up where you can get a sense of it here. So I've got all the stitching done. Okay, and there's the stem. But I want to back these all with green felt before I put them together so that you don't see the back side. And then I want to go ahead and put a hanger on it straight away so that it's completely finished. Um, I've got plenty of the, the yarn left, so I will probably braid some and make a hanger out of that. So, forgot to show that, but oh well. <laughs> Alright, so now let's move on and talk about future crafting. I'm just going to show a couple of things because I've kind of got a lot of projects going right now and I don't want to get into getting started but um i'm gonna show this this knitting one first and i've had this for a long time and i'm, I'm really wanting to get it started and i'm don't i'm hesitant to start another project when i have some some on the go i'm, he, I'm hesitant to start another project when i have some on the go already but i really want to make this so it's the fox paws by Zandy Peters. This was featured on um, when the grocery girls were doing those classes for Craftsy. Uh, and I thought it was just amazingly beautiful and really unique looking. So I purchased a kit for it. At the time, they had a deal where you could buy a kit from Craftsy and get it at a good deal. So um, I purchased, it's all Cloudborn Highland DK. 
and I will pull them out here so you can get a sense of how they look together. one so I'm not going to pull that one out. All right so that's the yarns that I got to make it out of. That's the kit that they had. I forget which version. I think that's called the Tundra version. I don't remember exactly but I really am wanting to get that started and I kind of really hate to start something else. I have because I want to do my fleece flight also uh, but I'm kind of tired of knitting on fingering weights shawls right now and I think that's why I can't get back on my changes. I kind of want to make bigger things right now. Uh, we'll see. But, I also have some stitching things to show. First of all, Bendy Stitchy Designs on Instagram is having a charity pattern sale. Apparently, she does this every month. I just started following her. But, um, this month was a cause that really spoke to me. It is a pattern that is going to benefit recovery efforts in Puerto Rico. And, I have my opinions about how Puerto Rico is being treated and um, so I wanted to help. And so this is the pattern. It's called the Moral Compass. And this struck a very deep chord with me. And she is donating. Uh, for every $6 pattern, you buy $3.50 of it go to uh, the Puerto Rico Fund. So um, Bendy Stitchy Designs is who that is. You can get it for immediate download off her Etsy shop. And I really want to start this right away. Um, I've got some... Fabric. I don't have any of this kind of putty gray fabric, but I have white and I have some blue that would work, I think. So I want to start that sooner rather than later. Then also two other uh, things that I want to start sooner rather than later. I need to purchase fabric for. I have not done that yet uh, because I want to do them on linen. The first one is the Haunted Autumn House Mouse in a House. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch the video from the uh, stitching store, you know I love these little mice patterns. So I really want to get her made. And then the other one is uh, the Halloween sampler. Um, let me pull this embellishments pack out of there. I want to do the Halloween sampler. I've had these both for a while and I want to get them done. So I need to get the fabric because these are both stitched over linen and I like how that looks. So I want to um, get those going so really that's all the future crafting that i'm going to show today i know that was pretty brief but i like i said i've got so many things going right now i'm hesitant to start more at this point so um yeah so anyway we'll see when i get finally get around to these but i will say this um doing this podcast has helped me be a little bit more focused with my crafting and it's not because i feel like i have to finish stuff for y'all to see but uh, it's just helped me be a lot more focused with my crafting, and that's been a good thing. Instead of me just buying stuff and then never using it, um, I am actually have a plan for most, well, not everything, but a lot of things I have a plan for. Uh, anyway, so we're going to move on now and talk about acquisitions. Okay, I don't have very many acquisitions right now simply because I'm trying to keep all my ducks in a row uh, until I get my tax accountant my paid this month because um, this is the month I do file my t income taxes and also pay truck and car insurance and had to buy some extra hay for the farm. So I'm just trying to be, um, I don't need to buy anything. I mean, look around me. <laughs> I don't need to buy anything right now. So, um, but when I went to the cross stitching store, uh, I could not resist this one particular pattern by Blackbird Designs. It's, so it's called The Way We Ride. And I just was so in love with that that I had to get it. Um, and I know that Jules on Moonshine Crafter said she has uh, this one too. So yay for us. We have very good taste. <laughs> The other um, acquisition is actually a kind, kind gift from Vanessa. Vanessa from the A Historian Knits podcast and I were, uh, we were doing a FaceTime the other day talking about just life in general and um, people being ratty, which we're not going to talk about that because like I said in my Instagram, when you wrestle with pig, all you do is get pig poop on you and mud and the pig enjoys it. So I ain't wrestling with no pigs in my world. But cruddy people are with us always like bad weather. And I'm not going to give them any of my breath. Enough said. 
but we were talking about knitting and she said well i started this sweater and i don't know why i liked I bought this brown and i thought it was going to be cool and i don't like brown i don't wear that much brown i said well i wear brown so she graciously gifted me two sweater quantities of yarn um this is knit picks wool of the andes and this is a color called um reindeer heather and it looks like there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, 14 skeins in here. Now, I can make two of Vanessa. I'm a big old girl, and she is not a big old girl. She is she is a normal-sized, lovely woman, and I'm a big old corn-fed farm girl, so I can make two of her. <laughs> So I'm probably going to have to supplement this with something else, but I am so appreciative of her giving me this. She also had another sweater's quantity of just a plain brown, but a beautiful dark chocolatey brown called Bittersweet Heather. So this is a heather yarn as well. And it looks like there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 13 skeins of it. So that is pretty close to being a sweater's quantity for me. It's not probably, it depends on the sweater. I mean, that's, uh, for the, that would be 1,300, it'd be four, 1,430 yards of this plain brown or this darker brown. And then of the reindeer, I don't know if the yardage is the same on those. Let me look. Yep, it's the same. So yeah, so this has got 14 skeins. So that's over 1,400 yards. <laughs> 1,500 yards. So that's, 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 a, that's a sweater quantity for me too. Uh, and oh, and I swatched for my flax and I was on gauge with the bigger needles. I swatched in the round too. So yay me. Upon Nancy's advice, and I had already thought about doing it anyway, but, but upon her advice, I swatched in the round. I'm actually on gauge. I don't know what this world is coming to when I'm knitting on gauge with the right needles in the pattern, you know, as things are, times are changing. <laughs> anyway, so those are my acquisitions for this, um, this time. Uh, oh, and I did get a beautiful candle from Noelle. She was very sweet to send me a candle. It is in the other room and I did not bring it in here, but thank you very much, Noelle. I appreciate you very much. So, um, I am going to cut it there and we are going to talk about science. Okay, so what's going on on campus uh, lately? Well, first thing, I have a couple pieces of exciting news. The first piece is my student, Grace, got a NASA internship. Woohoo! <laughs> I was so excited for her. She has um, loved space since she was a kid, and she's always wanted to work for NASA. And I have been talking with her since she was a freshman in high school. Turns out that she is a friend. Her mother is friends with my friend Shelly, and that's how... Shelly gave her my information how she got in touch with me. She is a go-getter, let me tell you. And she got a NASA internship. She's going to be at Goddard Space Flight Center this summer. And I am so excited for her. Um, and also, my student Luke made a major breakthrough in our research project by getting the Hubble Space Telescope data to talk to our spectral synthesis program. So I'm so excited. Lots of good going on. Uh, I also found out that... Uh, I completed my um, necessary credits for my recognition track in diversi diver diversity and inclusion uh, on campus. So I'm very excited about that too. Um, I think I would like to participate in another one of those. I don't know if I'll do it next year because I'm actually going to be co-teaching an honors college course on science in the public sphere in the fall that I've developed with uh, Jeremy. And so I don't know if I'll have time to do that track uh, next year or not, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if I if I do. Um, campus uh, classes rather are going quite well. Um, I've really enjoyed this new uh, astrophysics book I'm using, which has been great. Had we've had a pretty busy planetarium show season already too. Uh, funnily enough, had uh, we've had pretty steady stream of students coming in for the planetarium programs, which has been really good. Um, I think next Tuesday I don't have one for the first time all semester, which is uh, interesting. We're usually not busy this early in the semester, but we are this year. Um, I think that I've got a group of students that are very interested in building a radio telescope. So I'm going to do that as a joint project also with Dr. Jeremy Lusk. Uh, we're going to 
work on having our students build two and we're going to put one here at my farm and one in Conway and try to do some interferometry with them which is where you computer sync the two telescopes and it makes the telescope act like it has a width equivalent to what's called the baseline or the straight line distance they are apart. Uh, which, I mean, that's a huge uh, having one out here, but it's, it's, you know, it's a significant distance and it'll teach the students the process, which is just as important. Um, went to a really interesting program on how autistic people see the world. There was a former student who uh, is high-functioning autistic who came back and gave a presentation uh, about how he interacted with the world and it gave me some food for thought about how I approach my classes um, So I'm definitely going to try to incorporate in some of the things that he talks about um, He talked about in terms of like taking things literally and trying not to use idioms when when, when it's important um, and how sarcasm very often will fall flat uh, to someone who is on the spectrum because they see things very concretely. So I, it gave me some food for thought to um, how I would approach my classes. So it was an interesting program. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. I did my evaluation, my self-evaluation, and I tried to be pretty honest on the place where I think I do really well and then on the places where I think I could use, use some work. You know, um, I allowed myself to be pushed out of the women in leadership thing this time and that's my own fault. It's my own my own decision because I did not feel comfortable um, being in proximity to someone who said something very hurtful to me. Um, I probably just need to get over it. But then again, why should I have to? <laughs> So I kind of talked myself out of going this time, but it was okay. I went to lunch with my friends and that was just as good. Um, unfortunately, my office neighbor, she has been having to deal with her in-laws, elderly in-laws health issues. And I found out this morning that her mother-in-law has passed away. Uh, and I messaged her and told her I was sorry. And she said, well, thank you for listening. I said, that's what friends do. You've listened to me complain <laughs> and, and vent enough times. And it is hard, especially, it's especially hard when you are not their blood relation and you really don't have any sway in the matter, but you see someone maybe being treated in a way that just makes you really angry uh, and wish better for them. And so I felt really bad for my office neighbor because she was very upset about uh, some choices that were made for this woman's end of life care. And unfortunately it followed a pattern of bad choices um, and I just felt really bad for the lady because, you know, she's had to put up with a lot in her life and, and the one, you know, she, she's, she had suffered enough, basically. Uh, but anyway, so that's kind of what's going on on campus. Uh, we're getting ready for our Super Science Saturday coming up. It's about six weeks out. Um, we're going to have two classes working on it, so that'll be good. Um, and then um, we have the senior senior lab students are going to be speaking and we're going to go to a conference trip so i have a few things coming up there so i'm very excited to see what that brings but overall i'm just pleased with how my students are doing generally they seem to be very interested and eager and we've had some great conversations in my university physics three or my modern physics class i kind of call it both things about inclusivity and uh public scholarship and things like that. So I told them the other day, I said, you know, the ones that are going to make a huge difference in the world are going to be y'all. Y'all are the generation that's going to save the planet. I really, truly believe that. And you're going to be the generation that sees hate be marginalized instead of people being marginalized. And I truly believe that they're the ones that are going to do that. And I work with these young people every day and they give me hope. So, um, Anyway, so yeah, so I am going to end that there. Oh, no, I have a cool science thing to share, though. Let me forget to do that. Um, someone shared this with me, uh, and then I had seen it in the Week in Science recap from Science Alert, and maybe you have seen it, too, where a French, French National Institute of Health and Medical Research in Bordeaux, some researchers, have figured out how to grow yarn from human skin cells. And it's essentially a, sub, a filamentary substrate that they have grown using 
layers of skin cells that can then be manipulated into knots or a knitted fabric or a crocheted fabric to expedite wound treatment. So burns or uh, scars or skin grafts or anything like that, this would be a breakthrough in being able to heal those wounds quickly and cleanly. Um, Science Alert came out with this article about it and um, they could use, could be used to close wounds, it could be used for uh, skin grafting, it could be used for treating scars and things like that. Um, the human cells are grown into long strips or they're cut from sheets, they're grown on sheets and then they're cut into strips and then they're woven into this yarn-like material that then you can use to create membranes or pouches or um, long tubes and uh, it says basically anything you can do with textiles any textile approach is feasible knitting braiding weaving crocheting and so on so there's a really cool uh, photograph here that shows um, how it works to, to how they look put together and it said so far they've tested it in rats and they've used it to stitch a rat's wound and help it fully heal in two weeks and they created a skin graft using a cuffed custom-made loom to seal a sheep's artery and stop it from leaking. So I thought that was pretty impressive. So I'm going to link that, a little a crossover between crafting and science again. So I'm going to link that article below for those of y'all that are interested. So now we're going to move on and talk a little bit about farm life. Well, I woke up to snow this morning, not much, but it was snowing. It was 65 when I got home yesterday, and this morning it was snowing. <laughs> Welcome to February in Arkansas and lots of other places. The weather right now is taking us on a roller coaster ride, and that is frankly horrible for my animals because they don't know what to do with themselves. Uh, my poor tree out here, my nectarine tree, is on the verge of bursting forth into bloom, and it's probably going to get all the buds frozen off of it. Um, I have a sick calf that I'm trying really desperately to save and this weather was working with me because it was pretty warm but it has just been so incredibly wet. It is so wet and muddy here. It is unbelievable how muddy it is. And I'm grateful for rain. I'm always grateful for rain but I would like a little less rain and a little more sun right now for the next little while. Um, but it has been just a roller coaster ride as far as the temperatures and the weather conditions go, and that is a very hard row to hoe uh, with my animals. Uh, I did get some seeds started. I took some older seeds and just planted them in some pots to see if they would germinate. I was looking at them this morning before I started recording, and it looks like they might be on the verge of germinating. Uh, I bought some plants at the feed store, but they either got too cold while they were in my car or the cats have got to them, so I basically wasted my money on those. <laughs> oh. But anyway, uh, Jacob came and we moved the last of the cages from Shelly's house. And so I've got a trailer load of cages out there that I need to get unloaded. I need to do a little bit of repair work on some of them. Uh, but he is going to come back over spring break and help me do some big projects. And I'm very, very grateful for his help. He is, you know, I was talking with someone yesterday. I have never had biological children, and that's pretty much out of the cards for me at this point. But I have raised some good kids, <laughs> and I am very grateful for the ones that have become friends after they have graduated and are still in my orbit. And I'm very grateful for Jacob's help. Um, so we did get that done. Um, I sprayed the fruit trees, uh, the stone fruits again. Uh, you're supposed to spray them a couple of times. My jonquils are, are up and they're on the verge of blooming. I noticed the irises are starting to come up. Now they won't bloom for a little while, but the foliage is coming up. So you can definitely tell that we're turning towards spring, but again, it's just this dodgy weather is making it really difficult on all the animals. Oh, I know it, my goodness gracious. My goodness, oh, I know. He's so tired, it's so tired keeping up with me. It's tiresome, isn't it, buddy? He is. Um, Rode a little bit, did get to ride flame a couple of days. Uh, again, the weather has been working against me on that because on the pretty days are usually the days that I have to work late. Um, this past weekend, I did not go over to the barn because we had one nice day and I needed to get some work done because Penny decided to let herself out of her pen while Jacob and I were standing there talking. 
and it was a new section that I had added on and I got it fixed but it just made me realize I needed to go around and do some shoring up of some things so um, I put together all my seed starting stuff and got all my mats brought in and all my racks and everything and I shored up her pen and um, did a little bit of cleaning up outside not a lot because again it's so incredibly muddy that it's kind of a wasted effort at this point but I did buy seed potatoes I've got to get those in the ground but the signs are not right I'm gonna wait till the signs are right to plant those um, and yeah there's a seed swap coming up uh, soon that I want to try to go to if I can down at the Faulkner County Library which is in the town where I work and then I'm going to host a seed swap at an event in March. So hopefully we'll get some interesting new seeds to add to our repertoire. I've got a big list of stuff that I want to order, but we'll see if I get them, if I can get them ordered and get them started in time. I'm hopeful this year will be a good gardening year. I'm always hopeful of that. But um, yeah, so, you know, other than that, we're just kind of hanging in, trying to get everybody through till... I noticed there's some green stuff starting to poke up. It's mostly weeds. There's not a lot of nutritional content in it, but I am seeing some chickweed, which would still be nutritious for them to eat, and some hen bit. Uh, I got an update on the turkey. My friend Carol just came by and dropped some stuff off to me. Apparently, he is living out at their cabin and loving life. So, yay. The gray turkey is happy. <laughs> I know Maria will be glad to hear that because she was wondering what happened to him. Uh, but anyway, so that's just kind of where we're at on the farm, just kind of getting along to get along. So uh, soon, Bo, spring will be here and we'll be in full bore. Let's get places cleaned up when spring break gets here. I'm thinking about doing another spring break vlog this year. That was a very popular thing last year, so I'm thinking about doing another vlog. Uh, but anyway, so that's where we're going to kind of end the farm thing for today. So we'll come back and talk about a few final thoughts. Okay, well, uh, I read that little piece earlier about mental health, and I was having a discussion the other day about with somebody about mental health, and um, my mind has been in a couple of different places lately. Um, I was talking with my friend Marla about, you know, I turned 50 last year, and I, and I was talking with her about, did you feel like, you know, you're happy for where you're at in your life, but you realize that there are certain doors that have closed now in your life and you're sort of laying to rest the person you thought you were going to be maybe you had an idea of who you thought you would be or where you thought you would be when you were 20 where you would be at 50 or when you were 30 where you would be at 50 and and frankly that is not the person that I thought I would be then is not who I am now but I think who I am now is better than I could have ever planned uh, I'm I overall I'm happy with my life yes I mean could things be cleaner and better you know could the place be better looking could I have lost some weight could I be a little less wrinkly well sure but in turn as far as my internal peace and and peace about where I'm at in my life I'm very happy with that but you do think about doors that are have closed or maybe opportunities that you know you won't have ever again in your life and um, I was talking with her about that and, you know, I made decisions that have put me where I'm at, good or bad, and one of those decisions that I made when I came to the farm was I did not want to burden another person with making this farm financially solvent, nor did I want to burden another person with having to deal with my aging parents. Um, and partly that is because of how I was raised with watching my mother be forced into a position to make to keep the family afloat and also to care for her in-laws uh, when there was a very confrontational and adversarial relationship between my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, and my mother. And we were living in my paternal grandmother's house. That, that's where we're at right now. Uh, and that made my mother very um, uncomfortable and depressed. And I saw her have to endure that. And I knew then that I would not want to do that to somebody else. Um, and, you know, having to put this farm financially back on its feet has been a labor of love. And one that I have sacrificed, you know, the ability to take trips maybe. Or the ability to drive a nicer vehicle. Or the ability to wear nicer clothes. But it's what I wanted to do. I, I don't begrudge that for a moment 
but it also is a huge commitment of my time and energy and I simply just don't have the room in my life to deal with trying to find a relationship or love or whatever you want to call it and that's okay but sometimes you get to thinking about those choices and you're like did I did I make the right decision and, and you know at the end of the day I know that I did but you realize that maybe that door is closed for you for good and you may and I've been thinking about this a lot even since Christmas time and I've watched a couple of programs that kind of you know got my mind on it because you see you know apparently you know the, granted these are fictitious relationships but you see something you go you know it'd be nice if someone talked to me like that or said that to me or valued me in that way and so you you start thinking about those kinds of things but what I am very grateful for is that love comes in a lot of different guises it does not have to be romantic love and I shared this on my Facebook on Valentine's Day. It can be friends, it can be a community, it can be parental or child or other family. It can be um, the love of, of your, you know, of your work. It can be the love of this land. It can be the love that your fur kids, you know, give to you. It can be the love of being able to create. So love, my life is full of love. It is, I do not feel like even if I never ever have that romantic love my life is full of love and I'm very grateful for that and I'm grateful that society is starting to realize that love does come in a lot of different guises um, and how you love and who you love is really nobody's business but your own <laughs> so um, I'm grateful that I started this podcast because I have made some amazing friends and um, have an amazing support system in all of you who comment or send me letters or send me cards or surprise me with precious, wonderful, thoughtful gifts or just reach out to me when I'm feeling down. So I'm very grateful for all of you. And that is a love that I did not expect when I started this, but I'm so grateful for it now. So what I wanted to read is a poem that was written for a wedding. Uh, it is on the website Undercover in the Suburbs. And they were talking about how they wanted a non-traditional poem that was not the traditional, you know, heteronormative love. And we wanted to, you know, broaden our scope of what love was. So I'm going to read this, and I thought it was really beautiful. Love is not something for them. It is something for us. Love is not a prize for being liked and following the crowd. Love is the gift of courage when we feel different and alone. Love is not exclusive for people who live and believe in a certain way. Love has taught us to proudly live life our way. Love is not for perfect people for, from perfect families. Love is for us from our families. Love is a chance to get it right and to get it more right than we have before. Love gently challenges us to be more boldly ourselves while proving to us that we've been okay all along. Love shouts out loud that we are worth fighting for, silencing the whispers from our insides that we are not. Love is the imprint we leave on the skin of the earth. Our footprints glazed in the sands of our lovers' hearts. Love is the one thing, the only thing, that will not disappear. Our love will hang in the fall wind, persuading the leaves in their groundward dance, long after the light of this life is lost to the stars. So, love comes in many guises. Love is love. So, I'm going to leave y'all with that thought. And Willie is telling me he's chilly, so he needs to get a blankie. You need a blankie because your coat's in the wash. Yes, your coat's in the wash. I'm so sorry. You shouldn't have wore it outside in the mud, but it's hard to not get mud on it. It's so muddy outside. But anyway, I hope y'all are all doing good. I am so grateful and love y'all all in this community that we have built here together. I hope that you're all doing well. And until I see y'all again, y'all be good to each other and take care of each other. And what, Willie? <laughs> Peace out, y'all. Bye.